Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Crack Dice Gaming. It's Chick Donovan here with another Han Solo related video upon popular request. Today we're going to be looking at our first matchup preview. We're going to be looking at how to defeat Aiden Versio. But before we get in, I just want to say thank you for all the support on the recent videos, especially the Han Solo videos. Hansi here I've been practicing a lot with ever since the game, the full set was spoiled and the game was released. He's been the leader I've played the most with, so I feel like I have a good wheelhouse of knowledge about how to play Han Solo and I look forward to just helping you guys play Han Solo better and, and defeat the meta uh, in a rather inexpensive way. And so just thank you for all the support on the recent videos. I know if you watched the Chewbacca deck tech video, it was a struggle because Chewbacca is not a great hero to talk about. When you hear people talk about Chewbacca, there's like a thousand things that can go wrong and so trying to cover everything that can go wrong uh, is a little difficult but Shout out to Crank and Chewy and Captain Chicago for doing that video. If you haven't watched that, go watch that and uh, tell us what you think about that video, as well as the other Han videos uh, that I've made as well. Those were super fun to make. And uh, so let's get right into this video. How do we defeat Aiden Versio? What's what's the play? She's really popular. There's really two variations of Aiden. You have Green Aiden and Red Aiden. They kind of play the same way into Han, the, the general strategy is, is pretty much the same. So the first thing we need to do is we need to acknowledge that Lando Calrissian is great. Now, if you've watched any other of the Han videos, you've noticed that I've talked about Lando Calrissian a lot. Not a card most people talk about. I really, I consume quite a bit of content on YouTube just listening to podcasts and watching videos and really I haven't seen anyone else talk about Lando. Maybe someone has and I just haven't seen it. If they have, let me know. But no one's really putting the spotlight on this card. And I think Lando is a great card specifically into the control matchup and even further into the Aiden matchup. Why is Lando great? Well, first he ECLs into Aiden perfectly. Aiden is super slow. She deploys on six rather than like five, like a like a leader like Krennic. So with that six deploy, you just have to keep pace with her with her ramp. And with Han Solo, ramping is pretty easy. So you're pretty much always going to be ahead of Aiden. If not, at the very least, you'll be on pace with your with your resources. So being able to have six drop Lando ECL into six drop Aiden is really not going to be an issue if, as long as you keep the ECL online and keep that Lando in your hand. And if you're if you're playing open deck list, especially, and they see Lando, like they're just going to fear for their life to deploy that Aiden, and that is a really great situation that I've been in quite a bit when you have your ECL and your opponent's thinking about flipping their Aiden, and they're just like, I don't want to flip this because I know what's going to happen, and that's exactly why Lando's great. Uh, he's got that saboteur, so it goes right through the shield and just as six to face to Aiden. And Lando survives as well and will be a, a 6 1 unit with saboteur uh, still as well. So that's the first reason why Lando's great, especially in Aiden matchup. And secondly, he picks up your closers from your resource pool. If you have resource sneak attack or change of heart, surprise strike, if you're running that in your list, home one reinforcement walker, U wing reinforcement, etc. If you've resourced those cards early, you're going to be able to pick those up. And I know what you're thinking. Well, why would you want to pick up your resources? That makes it so you don't have uh, that many more resources to spend. If you pick up two resources, you lose two resources for the rest of the game. Here's the thing, folks. If you're a veteran player, if you've played the Aiden matchup, you know Aiden Versio goes to like round 15, something like that, you know, round 10 to 15. In other words, if you pick up two resources and you've been resourcing each round, you could be up to 12, 13, 14 resources, depending on your ramp as well. So picking up a resource or two is not going to hurt you. It's not like you're going to go down from five to four and, you know, not be able to play the card, you know, like going down from 13 to 12 resources is not a big issue. That's a one resource ring, especially if you're picking up a card that could win you the game. So that's what that's why people were initially skeptical on Lando was like, why would I want to return two friendly resources? Well, when you have your when you have a, a play mat full of resources and you can't even keep track of them all because that's how item plays. She just goes round after round, you know, Avenger this, Avenger that, you know, super laser this, super, you know, you're just going to have resources that that would be better in your hand than in your resource biome. So that's why Lando's great. 
Uh, third reason is you can resource anything early. That way you have a better early game start. You can feel comfortable resourcing a change of heart, a sneak attack, a home one or something, so you can play your early cards uh, more proficiently and more efficiently to get uh, some better early damage. So that's 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 really awesome, being able to say, you know what, I can feel comfortable resourcing anything because I know with the three Landos in my deck, if I can just draw one, or maybe you even have one in your opening hand, if I can just get this Lando on the board, at some point I can pick up that change of heart, sneak attack, or whatever it is. So Lando's a great card. If you haven't tried him, and you're seeing a lot of Iden, throw Lando, even if it's not a Han deck, even if it's just a, a yellow hero deck, like... I don't know. There's not really great, many great yellow hero decks, especially when the only other hero main is Jin, and every base is ECL. So therefore, you know, no one's running Jetta City or the 30 health yellow base. So really kind of like Han's, like the only yellow deck, if we're being completely honest, yellow hero deck. If you run Sabine yellow, I don't think Lando's a great fit in that deck either because you're not really looking to go late game with Lando. So if you're running Han, run Lando. Um... And second, second, least the second thing I want to talk about with Lando is the wombo combo. I didn't run this in my list that made the top eight at the 1K, but this is a great combo that, in hindsight, I should have run. I didn't run surprise strike in the main deck. It was cards 61, 62, and 63, uh, or the sideboard as well, not main deck or sideboard. And I really wish I would have because I think it would have helped me quite a bit. Um, but what you can do is play Sneak Attack, you can play Lando, pick up Surprise Strike from your resources, and then Surprise Strike a, a 6 attack unit with Saboteur for 9 damage. That's a great closer. If they're running a 25 health base, you just have to get them to 16 damage and then you can set up this play. It's not super easy to get off, it's not like a guarantee every time, but it's certainly it's certainly viable. Like If you can like round 1 resources surprise strike then it's it's very likely that you'll be able to get this off so that's that's the wombo combo it's, it's a really fun play to pull off like even if you just pull it off once in every few games to win like it's still really fun to just do even if it's not the most competitive thing which i think it can be like if you can get it off it's it's fantastic it'll win you the game but even you know it's just even like fun to do like sneak attack lando pick up a surprise strike nine damage like that's just fun that's just you know good old Star Wars Unlimited, good old Galaxy Shuffle, right? And that play will cost you a total of seven resources. So you only need to be on seven, right? Because Sneak Attack costs two, Surprise Strike costs two, and then your Lando is reduced down to three. So only seven resources for, for a nine damage play. People are talking about the Heroic Sacrifice K2SO play. Well, I think this one may just be on par with it per se. I don't know. Maybe it's better. Maybe it's worse. I'm not too sure. I, I, uh, I was kind of off the cuff there, the K2, K2 idea um, as far as comparing the two together. So I don't know. You know, I just think it's a, it's a really fun to play and definitely something if you're struggling to finish games, if you're getting Aiden or any other control hero to one, two, three, four damage away, then I think this is a play you should include, a wombo combo you should try. Okay, now let's look at the matchup MVPs. Lando's kind of off on the side in the corner because we just talked about him. We don't need to talk about him anymore, even though I would certainly love to. Uh, Super Laser Tech. It'll cost you five in this matchup. That's why the face cam is going the resource cost. Um, it just works great. It counters Power of the Dark Side perfectly. If you have a Super Laser Tech out there, it just destroys their Power of the Dark Side card, which in my opinion is one of the best cards in the blue control decks, in the Iden decks, it just it just nullifies that card. Like if they play that, they just like it's just a bad feeling on their part, and you're perfectly fine if they do that. Uh, rogue operative, similar to Lando. If you don't draw Lando, you can have a rogue operative in there, and she'll basically do the same thing, just one shotting that Iden. The big problem comes with Iden is when you let her sit around for two, three, four turns, and heal anywhere from 5 to 10 from base. If you can just down her and sack her once she deploys, you're you're looking really good. And both Lando and Rogue Operative do that good. You don't necessarily even have to ECL in Rogue Operative. Maybe it's something where you can U-Wing reinforce her in with a bunch of other units and she's just on the table either smacking base for 4 or just sitting there waiting for Iden to deploy. And uh, she's just a great card. Spark of Rebellion. I didn't run this in my main deck. Or my sideboard, but the more I thought about it and the more I looked at specific matchups, like the Boba matchup 
which hopefully I'll be able to get that video out soon. Uh, with being a full-time college student working part-time, content creation is is a bit of a struggle. I'm going to be completely honest. It, it, you know, it's a bit of a struggle. But um, yeah, hopefully we can get the Boba matchup out soon because I know some of you are asking for that, as well as the Sabine matchup. Those are the big three, Iden, Boba, and Sabine. But Spark of Rebellion, that card, I, I've gone back and forth on it, but I think it's worth including in the sideboard and or the main deck. Um, I haven't redefined my list down to a specific 60, but I think I would do my best to make room for it, maybe even cutting like Akbar Ezra or something like that. Because uh, there's some cards that really do punish this Han Solo deck in the Iden deck. Mainly Relentless. Because Relentless just shuts off your events. It shuts off your sneak attacks. It shuts off your change of hearts. Uh, your U-Wing reinforcements as well. Which you see, three three of them are the matchup MVP. So if you can spark Rebellion and steal that Relentless and, and discard it before they can get it out. That can, that can swing the tide of the game. Uh, U-Wing Reinforcement is great because that also counters Power of the Dark Side. You can U-Wing Reinforcement in a laser tech, uh, only costing 3. It won't cost you 5 if you U-Wing it in. And it's just it's just a great go-wide strategy. Um, be wary, though. You don't want to deploy a bunch of units when Aiden is out on the board because then it's just a bunch of easy kills for her and a lot of uh, healing from base. But going wide is great instead of playing like a 7-drop on solo or an 8-drop home one. Um, or not a drop home, a drop reinforcement walker and just having that get power of the dark side it away. And then change of heart, stealing an Avenger feels really good. Stealing a Devastator feels really, really good. Even like a Vader unit to swing for five to base or something like that feels really, really good. It's it's just a great card. Like it's change of heart, take your unit, smack with it. Uh, it's really important that if you have this card in your hand that you do maintain the initiative that way you're able to steal their unit before they attack with it. Uh, so it, you know, it's just a great card. And Sneak Attack, what what else is there to say about this amazing card? Sneak Attack in this, Sneak Attack in that, and, and, and call it a day. Alright, now let's look at... Okay, send the scouts. Where are the scouts at? Where are they at? Get them in here. We need to see what's in their deck if it's an open deckless tournament these are the five cards you're going to want to look out for um relentless like i said previously when i'm talking about spark of rebellion do they have it if they're not running it i don't want to say it's a guaranteed win but like if you don't mess up really bad and they're not running relentless you're probably going to win the game it's a very favorable matchup if that's if those two things happen and you know a lot of times they're maybe only running one or two, so it could just be buried at the bottom of their deck, or maybe they have to resource it early or something like that. But watch out for Relentless, because um, the first event played by each opponent loses all of its abilities, which can be absolutely punishing. If you have multiple events, if you have a waylay, you can waylay just to just to uh, do away with the ability and then change of heart or then sneak attack. So always keep that in mind that it's only the first event, not all events. So like if you have two events, you know you can play one, play the other. Just keep that in mind. And Darth Vader, you know you want to see how much money does your opponent spend on the game? Did they spend two hundred fifty, three hundred dollars to get these Darth Vaders? I'm um, just keeping it real with you because not everyone's going to have them, but uh, a lot of people will because uh, that's why he's in the game. He's a card that people should play. And so just taking note of that Darth Vader to come out on, on seven resources is is pretty key. Just to keep that in mind and try your best to play around it and not let him have a super great impact on the game. And Power of the Dark Side, uh, talked about it a lot. It's a great card. Don't flip your Han into Power of the Dark Side. Don't drop unit Han and have it get Power of the Dark Side. This is a card you're going to have to play around every blue villain matchup you play. Every Aiden, every Krennic, uh, Grand Inquisitor, I suppose, if they're running blue, you know, if they're running blue villain, you're going to have to watch out for this card. And if they're running green villain, you're going to have to watch out for overwhelming barrage. Just mentally take note every round. Uh, just ask yourself the question, if he has an overwhelming barrage, do I just lose the game? And if I do, is there any way I can stop that? Do I need to play this waylay? Do I need to attack with my unit first? This, that, or the other? Do I change of heart so he can't overwhelming barrage off that big unit? That's just a question you have to ask yourself all the time. Does overwhelming barrage just absolutely kill me here? 
And finally, Super Laser Blast. Don't overextend. Don't play all your cards out and empty your hand and think you're just going to win because you've flooded the board because Super Laser Blast exists. It's a board wipe. It defeats all units, right? You you, you get the idea. You know, that's a, that's a pretty, pretty basic card gaming tip. But these are the scouts. These are what you're going to want to look out for. Just take a mental note. Um, of a how many they've played during the course of the game and when you see their deck list look for these five specific cards and see what they're running there's a chance that maybe they're not running relentless and maybe they're running like one super laser blast or two and then you just have to worry about that and the vader ob and power of the dark side they're going to be running three ob's they're going to be running three power of the dark sides and if they got the money they're going to be running three vaders but they may or may not be running relentless but as han solo hopefully grows in popularity you will also see relentless growing popularity, sadly. Um, and that, that's it. That's all I got for you guys. That's how you're going to defeat Aiden, defeat the meta slaves. You know, everyone's making Aiden videos. When I pulled up the Crack Dice Gaming YouTube, I saw two Aiden videos, two Aiden deck tech videos, how to play, how to do this, how to do that. So she's really popular. A lot of people seem to like her. People think she's S tier, perhaps the best leader in the game. A lot of people are saying, but I think if you're running that man right there, Lando Calrissian, I think if you got him in your deck, you got three copies of him and you can draw him. I think you're set up for quite a bit of success into the item matchup. Uh, I'm Chicky D. That's all I got for you guys. Remember to keep your blaster in your holster and don't be a meta slave.